Hello, I am Aleida Solis and this is SEO in 2023. Aleida, what is your number one SEO tip for 2023? My number one SEO tip is to learn and set an SEO quality assurance framework to avoid SEO fuck ups. Enough is enough. Uh, we have unfortunately way too many errors in our SEO processes. And this last year, I have seen like very important SEO processes with tons of well-established actions that are being held back just because of errors, right? So I think it's something that is obvious that hurts SEO processes. And unfortunately, because of the way that this, let's say, challenge has been tackled, it hasn't been properly fixed already, right? Every single year we see SEO horror stories, right? So we definitely need to make this stop. <laughs> So an SEO quality assurance framework, that sounds complicated. I didn't understand the next word that you said after that, uh, but uh, let's uh, focus in on exactly what that framework looks like. So you actually highlighted three key areas with me beforehand. So starting off with number one, education. Yes, education, validation, and monitoring. I think that the, the, the main problem is that whenever we think about SEO quality framework and avoiding errors and mistakes, we focus on catching this uh, quickly to avoiding them to, to da actually damage the, 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 our configurations, what we have already previously said. The problem is like if we are only, are only looking to catching the errors after they have happened, we're already behind, right? So it is very, very important that in this SEO quality assurance framework, where we also establish actions to uh, educate and, and prevent the SEO mistakes in the first place, because many of these mistakes and issues and errors and bugs happen because of misunderstandings of what we want to achieve. And then on the other hand, we set a good validation workflow uh, to avoid launching SEO errors too. Uh, and then of course, if this end up happening, like if like we will minimize the, the, the scenarios uh, if, if we implement these actions, but if it is, even if they end up happening, we can then set uh, really good monitoring systems to catch SEO incidents fast in a way that actually makes sense because we get alerts all the, all the time from so many tools and unfortunately, like there are so many people involved, we end up like overlooking many of these alerts because that's, that's so many, right? So it's important that this, these alerts are also configured in a way that makes sense and are actually effectively catched by the people who are handling the different areas of the process. So just focusing on those three areas just a little bit more. So education, are you talking about education for SEO teams, education for other departments within an organization? And also, what do they need to be educated on? For anybody involved in different ways, right? For stakeholders and even decision makers, because many of the errors that we end up <laughs> generating money, my times because, oh, the boss or the director suddenly asked, to change something. And this decision maker asked this in the first place because they were not aware that there were implications from an SEO standpoint, right? So it is important that we educate, that we evangelize at different levels, uh, that I, every time that I provide a, an SEO recommendation, when we kickstart the SEO process and I provide the first analysis out those recommendations, actions, I, I do this small training with the development team on one hand, the copywriting team on the other hand, the product team, and, and then also the, the marketing people involved, the decision makers, to make them aware of what it is critical to keep, what it is critical to change, the why behind. So whenever there's a decision involved, even that hasn't had have to do with SEO, they keep that, they know about that, they are aware about that, uh, and they know the potential implications that it, they, this can have, right? So, so it's important that we align and that different areas involved in SEO uh, and stakeholders in general are aware of what we are going to change, why, what, why we need to change this, what we need to keep on the other hand. Uh, so whenever they need to do something in their own areas, they, they keep that into consideration too. Yeah, the why is so important. I think many SEOs deliver training, you know, trying to evangelize SEOs within organizations, but often actually don't explain properly why it matters to other people. And if you can get people to understand that, they're more likely to take it on board and treat SEO seriously, understand the impact of it as well. 
Number two, validation. So you talked about avoiding launching with errors. So what are some typical errors that uh, can occur if adequate validation doesn't occur? Yeah, so for example, in the past, I have seen circumstances in which, for example, canonical tags have been setting uh, with certain criteria, but then there was a product launcher or a launch of um, a new section, new area, new product line, whatever, and then that was rewritten. And, and then all of a sudden, no canonical tags were, were shown, or they were shown with a different configuration or criteria. Uh, so this type of, of, of issues, mistakes, happen again and again and again, right? And, and, and then also, like, websites would have a very high dynamic um, inventory, too. Uh, we cannot expect to be, like, catching up the mistakes that are generated because of the on nature of, of these pages. So we need to set rules to prevent them in the first place and validate them in the first place. So whenever a facet runs out of products and we know that they are not going to be back after a certain, certain amount of days, certain number of dates, or certain time, like we will configure these pages to show this. We are not going to allow this page to become a soft 404. We are not going to just show a 404 uh, uh, on the other hand, right? So we, we need to identify how, how we can manage these pages so they, well, we, we, we make the most out of them, we keep leveraging them, they give a good user search experience to you at the same time, and it makes sense uh, what the goals that we want to achieve. So for that, it is not only necessary that we set checklists, and this is very common, right? We check, we, we share checklists that the development team needs to use, the copywriting team needs to use. We also integrate certain type of validation within the CMS and automatize this, which is great. But what it is important is have actually the alignment and, and uh, the agreement of the teams involved that, well, they are actually going to uh, use the checklist and the checklists are not going to be sitting there somewhere and they are going to forget about them. And then what it is also important is to have this agreement of what is going to happen if something goes uh, wrong happens, right? Because we always assume that nothing wrong is going to be lunch, but it tends to happen from time to time. So what is going to happen if it is something that will hurt the website crawlability or indexability in a very uh, a severe way? We know that, and, and it cannot be fixed in the first 24 hours. It needs to be, it needs to roll back, right? It needs to be rolled back. So we need to have this agreement beforehand and not wait for that uh, issue or bug uh, to happen, to sort out with the development team or the head of the development team uh, and, and go through some very, let's say, uh, stressful time, right? Like, so this type of rules and what to do when something happens need to be agreed at the start of the process. So it's all very, like, let's say, straightforward. <laughs> uh, okay, something wrong happened in this area. Well, can we fix it before 24 hours? Uh, yes or no? Or no. Okay, let's roll back. And, and then you can fix it with enough time. And we know that at the end of the day, you want to end up like really damaging what we have been able to achieve so far. I mean, it's straightforward, but it isn't necessarily simple to predict. It doesn't necessarily uh, happen uh, correctly. A, a client of mine changed their web design team recently. And uh, because of that, um, they decided to pull out quite a few plugins from WordPress. And that doesn't doesn't yeah. matter. That doesn't matter. And, and, and it took them months to realize what... We never can assume. Assumptions mm. are the mothers of fuck-ups. <laughs> and that is why good validation should be also in place. We should agree, okay, we will crawl and validate before and we'll crawl and validate after it is launched because certain things can happen in between, right? So we shouldn't never assume, oh, oh there isn't going to be any SEO-related release in this sprint. So we don't necessarily need to check. No, you should check because some other type of configuration might have changed that could have an SEO repercussion, right? So it's always, always, always important that we have this, let's say, workflow agreement, alignment in validation before and after the release, and then establish what will, ha what will happen if something goes wrong. So is there software that you can recommend that will automatically check to make sure that everything that you want to be checked uh, is up and running and in place? Yes, actually, um, uh, I love Content King for that because it allows you to uh, run in real time. Uh, so it will really, really, really alert you as, as soon as something go, uh, wrong happens. And then you can also configure the alerts in a, in a way that 
that they actually are context aware and, and make sense for you. So for example, the certain type of pages that need to have a certain type of configuration, you can set the, those rules and configure the alert to go to exactly the right person that needs to be informed about that, uh, rather than going to a generic person or rather than informing that whenever a page comes uh, or becomes no index and it doesn't make like, it, it doesn't matter necessarily, right? So is when actually those pages that matter or configuration that actually matter for you uh, within your SEO process actually change or change in a way that is hurtful and you know are, that are hurtful. Of course, like uh, SEO crawlers, any SEO crawlers also you can set recurrent uh, pre schedule crawls and you can configure those crawls to be or to have this group that is actually necessary. You don't need to do a full crawl of everything, just crawl a uh, certain type of pages that you know that are representative of, of, your, of your website, of every type of, of, of uh, page of your website, and then you can generate a report and com compare them quite easily to the ideal configuration of each one of these pages. So you can, you can confirm before, after, and then on real time whenever something happens. And that kind of blends with your kind of third point of monitoring, um, because you, you need to be monitoring on a regular basis. And you talk about things like rankings, traffic, conversion decreases. Um, would you still use and recommend GA4 for that? Or is there other software that you use instead for that? Yes, of course. I mean, for, for uh, traffic and you're using Google Analytics, then uh, J4 will offer directly the insights, right? So that's pretty straightforward to configure, but you can set this at every single level. So for example, I mentioned Content King, but also we have Little Warden. We have uh, uh, many of the tools that allow you to configure real-time alerts and also it's, it's how you configure the tools ultimately, right? Like a, a lot of run trackers, like advanced web rankings will allow you to configure also alerts in a way that actually makes sense for you. Okay, if I have, have uh, you decrease in rankings more than X, uh, for this group of queries that are like high or very important head terms for you, etc. Right, and and this person is alerted when this happens, or you have to stop uh, from showing um, uh, certain features, and this is something very very important for that you in that process in that context. So, like you are alerted. So, and I believe that SEO tools have become very powerful uh, in that regard, and like from rankings to to crawling to um, content changes, also title, descriptions, etc. You, you can configure alerts with a variety of tools in, in order to get or to be informed when that happens. So you've shared what SEO should be doing in 2023. So now let's talk about what SEO shouldn't be doing. So what's something that's seductive in terms of time, but ultimately counterproductive? What's something that SEOs shouldn't be doing in 2023? Oh my God, I so highly dislike this question that from time to time- <laughs> I thought I you were going to say me there, but no, okay, the question. About, no, 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 about, about being asked like, oh, but this is actually a ranking factor, right? Like when I am like, and, and, like look, if you are still at this point chasing what uh, you think that Google might be taking as a ranking factor. Google actually wants to provide the best user search experience to their users. Uh, so ultimately, whatever you can make, develop, improve in your content to make it best in class, uh, to provide the best possible experience to your users, yeah, like, let's not, are you sure that authors are being taken into consideration? Are you, you sure that like, Look, if it is going to be clarifying for your users to understand that this article has been written by an expert and it's going to provide confidence and trust and, and allow you to better connect and establish your authority with your uh, users, add it. Like the effort is minimum. And we know that Google wants to get there, that Google wants to replicate, simulate the type of criteria that users take into consideration uh, when accessing information, right? So do it. Do, let's not be thinking about if Google is actually taking this or not taking that or capable to already identify this. Uh, because if you are always thinking like that, you are always going to be behind, right? Like go and take a look at what best rank players in your sectors are doing and do it. <laughs> And, and doing much better than them, right? So, and rather than asking, oh, is, is this yet a ranking factor or not? So yeah, I think that that needs to finish already. Elida Solis is SEO consultant and founder at Orienti, and you can find her over at orienti.com. Elida, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2023. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Always a pleasure. Get your copy of SEO in 2023, the book, 
over at seo in2023.com. 